People tend to think that having people on a waiting list is a bad thing. But in this film, we're going to show you how having a waiting list that is the right size can help offer people choice and flexibility in when they're seen, as well as achieving a maximum waiting time. To help keep things simple, imagine this is a new service, so there's no existing waiting list or backlog. Here is the puzzle. How big does the waiting list need to be in order to meet our own standards by seeing everyone who's referred to us as a routine patient within five weeks? And because these are not urgent referrals and life is complicated, we also want to offer appointments with at least two weeks' notice. Let's assume an average of 24 patients are being referred every week. In this first starting group are Mary, Mike and Mariana. We offer each of them a choice of week 3, 4 or 5 in which to be seen. Mary can't be seen in week 3 as she has an important work deadline, which she fears might even run into week 4, so she chooses to be seen in week 5. Mike's mum is visiting from Australia in week 3, but she's going home on the Friday, so he chooses week 4. Mariana, on the other hand, has more flexibility with her time and is free to be seen as soon as possible, so chooses week three. Like Mary, Mike and Mariana, each patient in this first block will have their own reasons for choosing when to be seen. In the first week, another 24 patients are added, and these two will make their own appointment choices, giving us 48 people in the waiting list, with no one having yet been seen. Week two arrives, and another 24 people are added, taking the waiting list to 72, still with no one having been seen. In week three, Mariana and the others from the first block of referrals attend their appointments. Those who've chosen week four, like Mike with his mum visiting, and those from week five, like Mary with her work deadline, are yet to attend their appointments. So eight people have now been seen and come off the waiting list. But don't forget, another 24 people have been added, so the waiting list number is now 88. I know, this keeps going up, but it will stabilise soon, I promise. Now comes week four. Mike's mum has now gone home, so he and the others like him attend their appointments, along with those who are able to be seen as soon as possible who arrived in the middle of week one. But the Marys from our initial group and the Mikes from week one carry on waiting. Meanwhile, another 24 patients come in and again make a choice about when they want to be seen. This week we've seen 16 patients, but we also have another 24 patients being referred, so the total number on the waiting list is now 96. Let's look at week five, where everything becomes clear. The Marys from the initial group are now able to fit their appointment in around work. The Mikes from the second block have finished with their personal commitments and the Marianas from block three are also being seen. We're now seeing 24 patients, which is the same number that are being referred into the service. The waiting list number holds still at 96 and it won't go up anymore. Let's see what happens in week six, when we add and see another 24 people, and in week seven, eight, and nine. As long as the number of people being referred and the number of people having their appointment stays the same, we have an ideal waiting list size of 96. We have arrived at a stable system, and we know that with a waiting list of 96 people, we can offer everyone at least two weeks notice a wide variety of choice and see them all inside of our own five-week target.